It seems to me like the Java runtime environment, the JRE, is quickly going out of fashion. Some Java builds, like Oracle OpenJDK, no longer provide a JRE option. These builds used to be used by anyone that was concerned about storage space and security. Fortunately, if you don't want to use a full JDK to run your Java application, you have a few options left. In this video, we'll explore how to create your own minimal JRE using tools that were made available in Java 9. So let's get right into an example. We're going to use an amazing Battleship game that I introduced you to in the last video. Once we've built the JAR file, it's very easy to run and it simulates a Battleship game, which you can learn about more in the previous video. Anyway, what this application does isn't really important. What's more interesting is how we're going to create a minimal JRE for it using a tool called JLink. JLink is included in the JDK, so if you have the JDK bin directory in your path, you can just run it like this. So we need to tell it which modules to add to our JRE. And I happen to know that there's a module called java.base, that contains all those Java utilities you're probably familiar with inside the Java util and the Java lang packages. And let's create it in a directory called JRE. That's it, very straightforward, and it's now created a JRE for us. It's got the common JRE layout, including the bin directory, where we can see it's got the Java command for running Java applications. Note that it doesn't have the Java C command, so this is definitely a JRE rather than a JDK. Let's also check the size of this thing, and we can see that it's already pretty tiny at 41 megabytes. And maybe you want an even smaller JRE, so here's another trick. We can pass some additional flags, which add extra compression, and leave out things that aren't required to run Java applications. When we run this, so let's remove the JRE directory, run again, and this time we've got a JRE that's 25 megabytes. Quite impressive, wouldn't you say? Okay, so let's see whether this JRE will actually run our application. Uh-oh, we've got a class not found exception. Now this highlights the fact that when you use JLink, you need to be careful to include all the modules that could possibly be used by your application. In this case, I'm using a class java.aws.point, which isn't contained within the java.base module. So surely there's an easy way to find out what modules your application requires. Well, fortunately, yes, there's another tool to do just that. Now we're going to use another JDK tool called JDEPS. This will analyze any dependencies and print out which Java modules are required. So let's run it on our jar file. And here it shows us the packages that our application's using and the Java modules where they're found. So in this list is the java.desktop module, which we'll have to add to our JLink command. Oh yeah, delete the directory again. As you can see, just adding java.desktop added another 15 megabytes to our JRE. In this situation, I would definitely make code changes to avoid using that point class, which is the only thing I'm using from java.desktop. But let's carry on and see if this JRE runs our application. Awesome, so we've just used the JLink tool to make a minimal Java runtime environment specific to this application's requirements. And we've used the JDEPS tool to make sure that we've included all the modules that this application depends on. So now that we've got this JRE built, what could we do with it? Well, one option would be to package it up inside a Docker image. So you could actually run the JLink command inside the Docker file. And then we can use that image in a multi-stage Docker file to create a new image, which also includes our application jar file. We can build that image and then run a container and see that our application is running with a minimal JRE. And many thanks to the Dev Explaining channel who gave me this idea for the Docker file. Of course, you could just as easily copy this JRE onto a dedicated server, but make sure it's using the same operating system as the one you use to build the JRE. So now if you ever have a requirement to create a very small JRE, you can now use JLink to do that. If you have any interesting use case where you've used JLink in the past, please let me know in the comments down below. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next one.